I'm going to fly because I want to leave time for a little discussion. Uh, this is an open femoral shaft, so uh, kind of like what we talked about before, pretty transverse. There's maybe a little bit of comminution. Um, I always get a little bit excited when I see something um, where I've got some sort of a, you know, some sort of a little key in. So I've got this little um, spike that's going to give me an opportunity to maybe check my reduction, and the the kind of things that we can do in order to uh, evaluate that. So here's the overall alignment uh, in the trauma bay. You can see some of the subcutaneous gas. So clearly there's an open fracture. It looks like it's out through the medial thigh here. So uh, here's the contralateral side. And this is a technique that I, I'm gonna, the, the paper that I like the best is Paul Tornetta's paper. So we've got a, you get a lateral view of the knee. Um, and with the with the C arm completely flat at 90 degrees, then you get a perfect lateral. And so we've got the posterior condyles lined up. I've got my distal condyles lined up. That's about as square to the femur as I can get. And then whoever's holding the limb, freeze. Red light, don't go anywhere. And then you bring the C arm up into an AP at the hip. And that's the image on the right. So for this person with their leg in that exact position, this is what their proximal uh, femur looks like. And that's going to give you a little bit of profile on the greater trochanter and the piriformis fossa. It's going to give you a lesser trochanteric profile, get an idea of what their head neck offset looks like. So you're going to get that perspective. So you're going to see that person on profile once and you're going to make sure you can match it. The other thing you can do is before you come up to an AP, you can just get the lateral and see how far up above horizontal the femoral neck points. And Harmeet showed some really nice drawings from uh, Dror Paley's book, which is a fantastic resource to just get an understanding of how to turn these complex three-dimensional structures into a two-dimensional drawing. But you can imagine if you've got the distal femur in a perfect lateral and you slide up, the head's really pointing slightly forward. And then the last thing you can do is before you get to an AP, you can bring the C arm up and up and up until you get the head exactly superimposed on the shaft. And then it'll be somewhere between 90 and zero degrees. Usually it's about 78 degrees because it's 12 degrees of antiversion. And so you can give yourself a number that even gives you something to count. And that gives me that those three pieces of information. What does the perfect lateral of the neck look like? How, how many degrees up does the C-arm come before we get the head centered on the shaft, and then what does the AP profile look? And those three pieces of information really help me. The last thing is the actual fracture site. So this one, we did an open reduction. We had an open fracture. We had to debride that. It's a high energy injury. We got an open femur shaft. So we used uh, Dr. Jeff Marichek's paper where we used a true lateral approach for a medial open femur, uh, where he, he noted that uh, you can use a defined approach to get access to a fracture site and not always just use the, the traumatic wound. And so we used a lateral subvastus approach, uh, trying to be relatively soft tissue friendly, but that would allow us to place implants and clamps and then later approach that site again if there was a reason to. Um, and then for this, what I look at is not only am I looking at the overall gestalt of the femur, which I'm here pretty proud of this reduction, I'm happy with that, but I'm gonna look at the overall diameter of the cortex above and below the fracture. And they should be continuous and match pretty well. And then the other thing I'm looking at is the overall thickness of the cortex at either fragment and making sure that the thickness is the same and there's not any steps showing me I've got a pretty uh, rotational malalignment. A diaphyseal femur fracture with an intramedullary device, you're gonna get your coronal and your sagittal balance within a couple degrees but rotation is the doctor's job, you know, that we get into the metaphysis and we'll see this, uh, we saw that on Harmi's case that you start losing the ability to just count on the diaphysis to do the reduction for you. But as far as rotational alignment, it's gotta be you. There's no one else that's gonna do that for you. All right, so here he is three months post-op um, and we've got nice callus formation, um, I'm sure we can start another discussion on whether you take these provisional plates out or leave them on. This is a 2-7 plate with unicortical screws. I didn't think this was exactly rigid fixation, uh, but he's well on his way to forming a bridging callus, so I'm pretty happy with that. 